Opus 100. Now that particular one, again it's a very well known one, it's Innocence and this is number five in the set. This particular piece is in F major, it's got a time signature of 3-4 and uh, the metronome mark that Bergmüller gives is 112. I suggest uh, a metronome mark of about 100 is more realistic these days. It says at the top gracefully, grazioso, and that is a really key element of giving this piece a really lovely character. But exactly how do you do it? Well, this study is about fingering and precision of fingering for your right hand in particular. It comes back to this idea of gestures that I talked about in the introductory video. That um, in the first bar, the first couple of bars, let's look at the, 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 the movements that you need there because the fingering that's given for each pattern of four notes, we have four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. And you join those together with your gesture. And you might see with my hand, it kind of makes a little wave as I come down because it's that the arm and the hand that do it, not the fingers. The fingers have to be strong and independent underneath here, but I'm not doing this. Listen to the change in sound. It's yeah, da, 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 and it's up to you to decide on your interpretation of that. That is going to give you the graceful feeling. At the end of it, you then have this little sigh. Da, 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 da. Now you'll find this all over music. You know, these little sighs come everywhere. Couplets, they're called. And the, the sooner your student knows how to do couplets appropriately, musically, the, the, the more beautiful and satisfying it will be for them to play their music. So it's a down, it's ta. I talked again in the first video about string players. Imagine again, just practice being a string player. Yaka daka 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 dee dum bum, or something like that, yeah? Might not do that bowing, but that, that feeling of legato, dee ya da da. Dee da da and dee dum bum, dee dum bum. You see, it doesn't work for a string player because you'd be going down, up, down, and then the da dum bum would be the wrong way around. But that's another point completely. Nevertheless, it gives you that sense, that physical sense and motion of that. And of course, that comes that little um, those that little figure, the two little figures you get in the first two bars come time and time again in that in this piece. So looking at bar seven. Do -dum. you've got this movement up the piano. And um, what Bergmüller does is he moves, just have a little listen. Okay, got my fingering wrong on the way up. But it, you're having to change your fingers as you go. Two, one, two, three, one, two, three, two. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now the way to do that is to change in the air. Like, like horses do, like ballet dancers do. You get your, your, your fingers ready for when you come down again, yeah? You come up, change. By change, I'm moving my arm along a little bit. Then down, up, down, up, up. something that's new to you I really really recommend that you go and do some research do some studying and have a think about how you connect how you blend all this upper body all your arm all your shoulders all your wrist down to your fingers so piano playing starts here not here this is the end this is the delivery this is where you want to start everything from so fingering here is Bergmuller's really important that you observe it because it's one of the points, learning points of the study. The final thing I want to talk about is the last two bars because 
especially the last bar, really, really catches people out. This is what it does. So you have this lovely, brilliant scale going up to the top, and having gone to the top, you then have to come straight down there. Now, that might feel easy to us as teachers, but I can assure you I have heard many splats in my time. You know, or, or, very common, So how, what ideas can I give you to, to, um, to help solve that? I think the first thing is they have to know where they're going. So getting that chord down here really, really securely understood, felt, they have to feel it. They have to be able to find that. So I often get them to sit there and tell me what the notes are they're playing. Tell me what fingers they've got on it. Yeah. And once they feel confident with that, that they can find it again, they take their hands off. I ask them to find it again on the piano, but this time just with their eyes. And I can feel myself scanning around from here, this bottom F, through to the A and to the F there. Can they feel it in their fingers? Feel it in your fingers. And now play it. And then off I come again. It's fascinating, I find, when I want to play that, what my eyes do. So if when I want to play it, I find I check this note with my eye and then I immediately come to these ones. So when I play, there is a ba -dum, ba -dum. Yeah, If you were to have a tracker on my eyes, that's what my eyes are doing. It's not looking in one fixed place, it's moving very quickly. I check, actually, that time I check this one and then I look at this one. Yeah, I definitely, I check this one and this one because my left hand has further to travel. Look at that one second. Very interesting. So get them to, to be able to do that. And then shake it out their fingers and keep shaking, 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 shaking. Count to three and on three they have to find it. One, two, three. Okay, that's another thing. Another, another thing to do is once they've done that a little bit, get them to stand up, walk to the door, come back or stay at the door until they're absolutely certain and they have to make that decision that they can come back and play that. At which point they come back and they hopefully play that like that. Those are also quite fun ways of doing that. A lot more fun than sitting there sort of trying to work it out. I'm trying to tell you that they need to feel it, absolutely need to feel it. And then once they can feel it there, they can play this one and then to there. The key thing here is that they make one move. They don't move off this note until they know exactly where they're going. You don't want to come off and go because mm. mm. that's what you're learning you're learning all that indecision so be precise help them to really break that down so that eventually they can play with a lot of uh, uh, bravura at the end and confidence innocence number five from Bergmuller's opus 100 if you want to find out about some of the other pieces and do watch all the videos in the series that are coming out gradually during spring 2023 and also you can download this overview of the whole set thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye for now <laughs>